Insecurity is a very common problem in online businesses. We see so many other people who are wildly successful and we say, well, that should be me. I, I should be where they're at now. And, and I can't wait. You know, these comparisons, right? If, if you're constantly comparing yourself where you're at right now in your business to others, if you struggle with insecurity, when you look at the successes of others, this episode is absolutely for you. I had a big breakthrough a couple of years ago that, uh, that I think is going to help you a lot. And as I've said before in the last few episodes, this is a flashback episode to some, um, we're doing a little series, that kind of a flashback series, uh, post Blackberry farm. This is a, a few days that completely transformed my business and changed my life. I got to spend a few days with Jeff Walker and Michael Hyatt and Amy Porterfield and, um, just getting to talk with them you know, sit down just the four of us and, um, and just learn from them. And this idea of insecurities, comparisons in online business came up. It's something that a lot of people struggle with. You don't have to. And I'm hoping that today's episode, if that's you, if you struggle with those things, today's episode will help. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. All right, so in the last episode, I said that this uh, that episode would be the last in my series of takeaways from Blackberry Farm, but I was wrong because I, ha- I had to share this message as well. And I mentioned that, you know, that was the last in like the series, but I'll be sharing these lessons for a lifetime because it really was one of those mountaintop experiences. And um, the last thing I wanted to share was, and and I mentioned this in the first episode in this series where I talked about trauma and how, you know, when I was in my mid twenties, we started a company, we grew it to, you know, about $15 million a year. We had 52 employees, but I was a terrible leader, blah, 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 right? Go back and listen to that Uh, because, you know, I I share more of the story there. But that became kind of a thread, a through line for the week at BlackBerry. And on, and I I shared that on Monday night at dinner. And on Tuesday, I shared a little bit more. And I was sitting next to Jeff Walker and and he, he just, he was like, how old were you when that happened? like 25 and he was like nobody at this table was even remotely close to that successful at that age nobody at this table even had an opportunity to fail that big at that age and he, and then i forget who it was i don't remember if it was i think it was amy said it's like you were 25. Most of us, uh, most everybody's an idiot at 25. Like I couldn't have done that at 25 either. None of us could. And everybody agreed. And they reminded me, I was in my mid twenties when this failure happened. Like I cannot let that continue to be a, a noose around my neck. Like I failed when I was young. Okay. that That's what happens. And I can't remember. I think I think it was Jeff reminded me. He was like, he's like, didn't you say last night, you know, like how old you are?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, I'm 39." He's like, "You're the youngest person here by five years. Like, stop comparing yourself at 39 to where I am in my 50s, and you know, Amy is in her 40s, and Michael is in his 60s." And I immediately thought of something that I share with you all the time. These two quotes. I've shared them a hundred times probably. And yet I wasn't letting them sink into my own. Like it was one of those things, do as I say, not as I do things, right? Number one, John Acuff, ironically in a guest post on Michael Hyatt's blog, years ago, said, stop comparing your beginning to everyone else's middle and end. If you're a year into your business, that's your beginning. Stop comparing your your year into your business to, to someone else's 15th year. 
I've been at this particular business for seven years now. Our income, our revenue has gone up every single year. If you make steady progress like that, you're eventually going to get to the point where you're a massive success. Now, it might take you 10 years. I don't know. But stop comparing your beginning to everyone else's middle and end. And the other one was was from Stephen Furtick who said, the reason we struggle with insecurity is because we compare our behind the scenes to everyone else's highlight reel. You see, like let's just look at personal life. You see someone's Instagram. Instagram's their highlight reel. Unless they're trying to be funny, nobody's posting on Instagram about the afternoon that they had a really bad stomach ache and sat on the toilet all day. Right? Nobody posts about that. And so you think, gosh, this person's so, they're always so healthy and so vibrant and I, my stomach's upset. And I'm so, like, it's an extreme example. Well, you know what? They have days like that too. Oh, look at them. They're off in Europe. Look at them. They're this. And I'm not saying that everyone you see is like this, but like if you look at the statistics, I heard a statistic the other day said that the average American, most Americans, if they had, I think it was a five or six hundred dollar repair needed tomorrow, couldn't write, couldn't write a check or pay cash or or use their debit card to pay for it. They would have to go into debt to pay a six hundred dollar bill. So if more than 50% of the population can't even afford a $600 payment and they're on some European vacation, the little known fact is they're going into debt to do that many times. Like I grew up, thankfully, in the way I was taught, I didn't even know it was possible that you could finance a vacation. Like, ooh, yay, one week of awesome sauce only to come back to the stress of having to make the payments. That does not sound desirable to me. <laughs> you know, So I didn't even know that was a possibility until recently. I learned that. I saw some ad for it or something. I was like, what? How is that even a thing? <laughs> you know? And so I, I – you see people on Instagram. You see people on Facebook and you go, oh, my gosh, look at them. You're seeing the highlight reel. You're seeing a second, 10 seconds, five minutes of their day, which is one day of their life. Yeah, many people do live a great life. And in fact, their life would, they're even their behind the scenes would be amazing. <laughs> but you don't see most of the behind the scenes stuff. And so you're comparing your everyday struggles to their highlight reel, and that's unhealthy. So we do that in our businesses too. And I compare, you know, gosh, why am I having to do this, this, and this? Well, because I haven't, like, I'm not at the point that they are. You know, why, why do I have to, why, why is it such a struggle for me to do this? And why, why am I having to do this task when so-and-so doesn't? Well, because I'm at the beginning. I'm in the, you know, I'm seven years along in a 30 plus year journey. You know, I came in to this business with less than $10,000 in the bank. That's like when I started this business, my wife and I started this business, we had like our business account, you know, started from scratch. We had to self fund it with a couple thousand dollars, not a million dollars. So we didn't hire on day one. We had to make money before we could bring on team members. So we grew slower than somebody who could pump in a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, a million dollars into their business. We didn't take on venture capital. So we grew slower. We self-financed. So what that looked like was in the first month we, you know, we spent a thousand, we made twelve hundred, and then the next month we Spent twelve hundred and made three thousand. Now we took a little bit of that profit. We hired a virtual assistant to work ten hours a week. Well, that accelerated things even more. So then we could, you know, third month we could push him to full time. That accelerated things more. So by month six we could bring on another part time team member, and then we could do this, and then we could pay for things that we couldn't pay for. Now after a year we could afford to take a risk and run some ads that might not bring in anything. Don't run ads when you need the money. 
because your ads might not work. It's hard to run ads when you're desperate because ads require testing. They require failure. They require being willing to lose $5,000 before you finally turn the tables and get to make $500,000. That's what it takes. It takes a little bit of trial and error with ads. So you can't run ads until you've got the money in the bank and you go, you know what? I can afford to lose $2,000. I can afford to spend $2,000 and make nothing. But if you look at somebody who's out there spending a million bucks on ads, well, they weren't there five years ago. Five years ago, they were breaking even. Five years ago, they were spending $24,000 a year, $2,000 a month. And the next year, they spent forty eight. dollars And the next year, they spent ninety six. dollars And the next year, they spent $400,000. And the next year, they spent a million. That's how they got to a million. It was just by doubling and tripling and becoming more profitable, things like that. So I, I just encourage you, like, I know for me, it was a reminder that I'm not where I want to be, but it's not about comparing myself to others. I, what I'm saying is I'm not where I want to be, but man, I'm a lot farther ahead than I could be. You know, you know what? I've had a lot go right. It's so easy to focus on our failures. It's so easy to focus on what went wrong. It's so easy to focus on the fact that, you know, well, we set a goal that we wanted to sign up 100 students and we only signed up 87. But, man, we signed up 87 people. That's still a lot. We had an affiliate prom- promotion recently where the last time we promoted it two years ago, we did we did almost $20,000. And so we just set that as our goal this time. Like... Our goal is to, to do just as well as we did last time. Like we know, in fact, we kind of felt like that was an unambitious goal. And we busted it and we worked hard. The time before we made 20, 000, almost 20, we literally were like $9 from 20,000. We finished fourth place in the leaderboard, which is like the worst possible place to finish. Like I'm just going to say it. It was, the, it was the five days to your best year ever promotion. It was the promotion that got us to Blackberry Farm for this experience. To the last time we promoted it before we started work, you know, ran Michael's stuff as a, as, as he was a client of ours, we did almost twenty thousand dollars, nineteen nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety one dollars and some cents. But we finished in fourth place. Only top three get to go to Blackberry Farm. This past time, we didn't do nearly as well, but we finished in third, and we got to go to Blackberry Farm. And we made, you know, a lot of money in the process. It was still a lot of money. We just failed in our goal. And I could focus on the fact that we fell short of our goal. Why did that happen? You know, what, what went wrong? Or I could just say, you know what? (laughs) We finished in third. So I chose to focus on the positive. So where are you focused? Who are you comparing yourself to? Are you looking at other people's highlight reels and comparing to those to your behind the scenes? These are all things you got to think about uh, in this in this world. Like so much, we talk a lot about the mindset of online business because so much of it is mindset. It's a mental game. It's an inner game. It's a it's a struggle sometimes. It can be very lonely. You know, it's why I don't know when when this podcast will release. Um, specifically, but you know, that's why we have our start mastermind. It's a small group, 12 people where, in fact, it's, in fact, now that I think about it, based on when this is going to release, we'll have closed, we'll have closed registration down, but you can go to the, you can go to the wait list. Just go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash start, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash start, and you can get on the wait list. What I love about this, um, this mastermind is it's 12 people who are all in the same position. They're all beginner to early intermediate, you know, online businesses. Most of them are not full-time. A few of them are. They had the little bit of the money to go full-time. Um, you know, but they're just starting out and they're going through the same struggles. And then every week we get together and one, you know, we have three people on the hot seat uh, so everybody has a hot seat every month. We focus on their big rock, their big thing that they're going to move that month. 
And it's just really cool because then as the group evolves, they start helping each other. And it becomes more of a crowdsourced thing. And, and you just see this massive progress. Like in the like our first group that we ever had, in the first two months alone, we had one, two, we had six people pay for their entire year's membership to start within the first two months. You know, Jim Folsom, I was like, dude, raise your prices. And he raised his prices considerably. And so in like two weeks, he paid for his entire year. You know, um, Gwen Morasco, we, we talked, we formulated a plan. And within days, she got a $2,500 coaching client. Um, Angela, same thing. Raise your prices. You've got to raise your prices. You know, we talked about that. And the list goes on and on. And then we were able to connect. I know Bill, we finally got Bill, his books ready because Jim formats books and, you know, he's in the group. And so it's just this really cool mix of people, but are all in the same kind of part of their journey. But the most important thing, and this is so fun for me, we have a Zoom room that we have set up. It's where we host our official meetings. This room, just these 12 people plus me, it's Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, right? That's when we meet. But that room is used three to three and a half hours every week. That means that two to two and a half hours a week, some number of them are getting together privately and helping each other out. They're talking on the phone too, I hear. They're interacting in Facebook, sure, but they're getting together in like, in person, so to speak, and, and talking and helping each, other, helping each other out because it doesn't have to be lonely. It doesn't have to be you all by yourself or even you and your team because you and your team is different than you and another entrepreneur. It's very different. And so I encourage you, stop comparing yourself to others. <laughs> it's so cliche, but stop doing it. Um, it, you know, maybe you're, maybe you're like me and you're five years younger than everybody else. You're in year two of your business and you're going, well, why am I not succeeding like that? Because they didn't either in year two. And the few that did, the few that blew up and succeeded really quickly, they had some stuff go right. And you just haven't had that thing go right yet. And that's okay. You haven't had your Oprah moment. I will tell you this. I've studied a lot of businesses and a lot of business owners. The companies that blew up in year one or year two, they had this big, they have this like upside down hockey stick moment because they go shooting up. They tend to level off. And when you compare them to the company that plotted along, got bigger month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year, those companies actually eventually pass them nine out of 10 times. Nine out of 10 times those companies will pass the company that shot up really quickly and then plateaued. Because what happens is they shoot up real quickly. They find their happy moment. They find their happy place. Let's just say it's a million dollars a year and they make a million dollars a year in year two. And in year three, they make 1.05. And in year four, they make 1.07 and then 1.09. Well, you go along and you make 10,000, 40,000, 120,000, 400,000, a million, a million five, 2.4, 3.7. You look at it year eight, year nine, you're at $4 million a year. They're at 1.2 million. I've seen that happen so many times. So just keep plodding along. Keep making progress every single day. Quit looking at other people's highlight reels. Quit comparing yourselves to others. And remember that wherever you are, that that's where you're supposed to be right now. Just keep improving every single day. 
So with that, that is officially the last episode in this series of takeaways from Blackberry Farm. And my voice made it. I made it. It's struggling right now, but it made it. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguy.tv. And if you have a question, you can ask it at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Who knows, might end up being featured on this podcast.